Now, to lose a loved one is devastating. To lose a loved one to murder is horrific. A situation that Marie McCourt knows all too well. Her daughter Helen was murdered three decades ago by a man named Ian Sims, who refuses to reveal the whereabouts of her body. Lobbying for change, Marie has created a petition calling for murderers to be denied parole until they disclose the whereabouts of their victims' remains. Marie's with us now. Hiya. Uh, we chatted a while ago. Yes, we did. How far have we got since then? Uh, we've got a lot further because the bill was read out by my MP, Conor McGinn, today in the Commons. And uh, it, was, it was just amazing, you know, to listen to him reading us out. I, I couldn't believe all these years I've been wanting this done. And there it was actually happening in front of me. And it was, it was very well accepted by the MPs that were all there and uh, in fact there were, it was all yays and we never heard any no's or whatever it is they say and uh, and then the uh, speaker uh, Mr Beko uh, asked Connor to present his bill to the uh, the officers who were on the desk in front of him so he had to come down the steps go to the centre and then smartly walk down and pass the bill over. That will be studied now and on the 3rd of February 2017 if it's passed it will then go through as a law. Talk to me if you can and if you want to about what happened um, all those years ago to Helen and and the fact that you still don't know where she is. Yes, Helen. Helen was. Uh, she was always very punctual. Uh, we didn't have mobile phones then. She worked in Liverpool at the Royal Insurance, so she had to catch two trains and then a bus to the village where we live on the outskirts of Merseyside. And uh, if she missed her train, she would ring me from the station from a call box and say, "Oh, Mum, I'm going to be 15, 20 minutes late." the next train you in. So she arrived home after phoning me three times, saying, you will have me tea ready, won't you, Mum? Because I'm going out at 8 o'clock with a boyfriend. And uh, I said, I know I have a bad memory, love, but it's not that bad. And um, she, uh, she didn't arrive home. But I'd heard on the, on the about quarter to six news on the local radio that uh, the trains from Merseyside, from Lime Street to Wigan had been delayed because the tree had blown onto the line. So I didn't worry. I thought, oh, that's why she's not wrong. And uh, I had to tea already. And then it got to seven, then eight, coming up to eight o'clock, and I thought, this can't be right. So I rang the, rail the station, eventually got through, and they said it wouldn't have affected your daughter's train because it was only after her stop that the trains they had to turn at St. Helens where she got off because of the tree. And uh, so then we went into Liverpool, tried to trace her steps, reported it to the police in Liverpool. And then I rung them when we got home. I rung them every hour on the hour, as the officer told me I could. And then two officers come out at about half past four in the morning, took Helen's picture away with them. And that was a picture of her here. Yes, was it this one? That's right, yes. They actually picked that up off the coffee table. They asked for that one in specific. I didn't know why then, but uh, it would appear that the officer recognised Helen's picture because he often travelled on the same train into Liverpool right. as her. Beautiful girl. Mm. Beautiful girl. Um, this man who is responsible for her death. Sims, he has never said where her body is? No, no. no. He's never admitted to the crime. Mm. He says he's innocent in spite of all the evidence against him. And that evidence has increased from when he was tried and found guilty unanimously by a jury. Um, it was 168,000 times more likely that he was the killer of my daughter. What would you say to him if you could talk to him this afternoon, uh, Marie, and say, you know, I just, I just need closure on this. I, yes. He's up for parole next year, I think? Uh, no, 2018. Okay, the year yes. after. Mm -hmm. What would you say to him? Uh, I would just 
I wrote a letter to him, you know. Uh, Did you? Yes, I wrote it when his first appeal was thrown out in 90 to 91, 92. And, uh, and I never put anything angry in the letter. I just appealed to him and I said, you know, please just tell me where where her body can be recovered and you won't hear from me again. I'll leave you to get on with your sentence. And, uh, and the reply I received back was, it's obsessing, it was horrible. And uh, yeah, it was, no, it really was. At first, he, he like kept it about um, how he was in prison and he had two beautiful children, and, uh, and, but then he seemed to lose it. And the, the letter is full of threats. And I've always had that letter kept in his prison file to be read by any prison at the parole board. And I was convinced that they could not release him because it was a threatening letter, uh, threatening to me, to my family, uh, and accusations, and we didn't even know the man, you know? What difference would it make to you and the family if you finally knew where she was? Uh, it would be, uh, it would be a great relief for me, you know? I need to find. I think of uh, my friend, Winnie Johnson, Keith Bennett's mum, and I know what Winnie went through, and when she was very, very ill, uh, she, she just wanted to find Keith, and she didn't get her wish. Ian Brady wouldn't do that, and I, I'm, get, I'm 73 now, and I just oh, think, <laughs> well, I just think, you know, it could be my turn next. I don't want to die until I know where Helen's remains are. I need to know that my, my body can go in with hers or what remains are found of her. And I just, I would beg this man, please, just tell me where her body is. Just let the police recover us and you'll never hear from me again. They could release him within, once I'd had the funeral, you know. Any time after that, they could release him. It wouldn't affect me because I've got my daughter back. And I think that that's the problem with these kind of killers. You know, we have over 38 families. We know of 38 families. Quite a few of them came to the uh, Commons today to be there to hear this bill read because they're in the same situation as me. And this is all because DNA can say who the killer is, even though they haven't got a body these days. And, and they were there supporting this bill. And, uh, and we need this law to be made because we can't have families going through the torment and pain I've had to suffer for almost three decades. And this law would mean that people would not get parole until they admitted where the body is? That's right, yes. Uh, to my mind, a judge, when they're found guilty of murder, uh, a judge, when he sentences them, he has to pass a life sentence. For murder mm -hmm. and, and that's what the judge did he said you've been found guilty of the murder of Helen McCourt and for that I can only give you a life sentence but then a delay to date they go on and give a minimum sentence and I say that shouldn't happen when there is no body it should be it's a life sentence and until you cooperate and allow the remains of your victim to be recovered or the body of your victim to be recovered then you will you will never come out of prison life will mean life. and he's the only person that can ease that, uh, that pain, pain for you for us yes for all our families you know i've left those families going home tonight they were there today they said it helped them enormously to know that someone is fighting for our loved ones' rights. You know, they were human beings, and they, they had their lives taken from them. And it's their families who suffer. If we, the Human Rights Bill, will not let you punish a prisoner like that, we have a tap dripping on our head every minute of every day. Every time we see a body has been found in an area that could be, we think, I think, is it, is it Helen? Could it be Helen? And, and it upsets me when it isn't, because then I think, oh, some other family are going to get terrible news today, and they may have thought their loved one had just gone missing and not been in touch with them, and they're going to find out they've been murdered and missing all this time. And uh, 
And I think that the government has to make this law because otherwise they are party to putting us, the innocent victims, through torture, through hell. And they have to justify that. And I think the only way they can do it is by saying, until you tell us where your victims' remains can be recovered, then you will, only then can you look forward to being released. All our families that were there today all say exactly the same as me. They don't care what happens to the killer. All that they want is their loved one back and they will leave them. If they get released, that's fine, you know? I do. We accept that they've, they're, they're in prison, but we can't allow prisoners, we can't allow killers to control, and that's what they are, they're controllers, because okay. they won't release their victim to anyone. It's a secret to them and no one else. Come back and talk to us again in February, won't you, when it's hopefully it's become law? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. it's great to talk okay, to you. Thank Thanks you. very much for coming in.